Hello, welcome back to Underrated Movies. I'm your guy, I'm your man, Mr. Alton Henry. Today I'm going to talk to you about another film, The Northman, starring Alex Skarsgård, Ethan Hawke, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Nicole Kidman, released this year. It's a story about a man who's on a path of vengeance, non-stop bloodthirst vengeance, who's Set during the Viking era, you guys should have researched more into the Viking part of this uh, recommendation. Of Alex Skarsgård's character, who is, I would say he's bent on revenge, but I feel like he is cursed to get revenge against his uncle for the murder of his father. Given through certain sequences, certain sequences through the film, I believe. From watching the movie. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you. This is one of the best films that came out of this year. Fortunately it is. Not doing too well at the box office. And I think it's still in theaters. You can currently still watch it. If you choose to choose so. But first off like subscribe. Comment below on my channel and welcome. And you can also follow me on my TikTok. I don't have Twitter. I have Instagram. But I'm more with the view. Uh, and like subscribe. And Hopefully you put down what is your favorite underrated movies. Now, this is Roger Eggers' third feature, and this is more into the action adventure realm. This is an action adventure um, film. It, it does have adventure, I would say this. And this is one of those. I'm going to say why you should watch this film and my concerns of future movies like this or any film that tries to do anything risky or so forth. Alex Skarsgård, for anybody who is a fan of this actor, I will just flat out and say it. I'm not much of a fan of him, but he has finally tackled a film that I think is probably my favorite film of his in his filmography. This film is phenomenal. Supposedly that's a real, real life figure of medieval legend of a direct inspiration of a character of Prince Ham. Oh, wait a minute. So he's a... Okay. It's a figure, so he may or may not be real. It looks like he might be a uh, fictional character. Amleth. Who is bent on revenge of avenging his father against his uncle? This actor, Alex Skarsgård, is intense. You see the commitment he puts in this film. You see the rawness, the the emotional burden that this character goes goes through, the the the, the traumatic sense of loss but savagery, and you see it in the eyes, you see it in the presence, you see it in the feel of this actor, and he commits to it every single second on the screen. This guy sometimes is even terrifying. I actually like the grittiness and the dark aspect of it. It actually makes me grateful over it in this time, because it's all about survival back then. It's about survival. It doesn't matter if you're good, you are bad. People will just kill you just to survive for no good reason. And it's terrifying. There are certain part, parts of this movie that's terrifying and it is dark. This is a dark film, so let, let's not let's not <clears throat> let's let's not let, let's get it out of it. Let's get it out there. This is a dark film. This film, there is really not a good happy moment except where Alex Skarsgård starts to feel something other than vengeance. He feels love and affection from Anya Taylor-Joy's character, who's, still, who's also very good. She perfected a good Viking accent. She, she's, she's phenomenal. She is a great actress. Amazing. That is really the only time where he feels like he's able to feel some sort of love and affection um, since the, uh, since, since that traumatic event that he experienced, um, as a kid, and it's actually kind of quick to the point when it kind of builds up to that. It's actually, it gets to introduce, um, Ethan Hawke and the character, um, Emleth as a kid, and it's kind of really straight to the point where you 
it, when you introduce them, then in the trailer you show Ethan Hawke's demise, and then it jumps to the point where you see his character lost and trying to find his way back home to rescue his mom and and kill his uncle. And there's quite a few twists and turns that kind of happens in the movie. There's 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 a big twist that deals with his mission and is like a complete shocker as to what happens. It's probably one of the most devastating moments in the film. And to kind of understand the con context, and what I mean by context, the goal of the character and the, I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say addiction, but his goal to where it feels like he cannot deviate from doing anything else or experience anything else besides his revenge quest. Where I might spoil a little bit of the detail here that he, that I believe it was a curse moment or, or a curse thing that his father put on his son to seek revenge for him for his death. And you feel the other shock. You you feel the the raw the the violence the the hell that this character goes through and experience through life and he steals every single scene in this in this movie it's kind of like it was actually kind of different from what i thought was the movie was going to be um where it kind of you follow his character and there's and there's actually quite a bit of fantasy elements in this i did not expect this from this movie i mean there's a lot of surreal and fantasy elements i'm surprised a film like this at this scope is able to pull certain ideas off for a mainstream film. Unfortunately, the movie is not performing well at the box office, and I guess it's it's already been a full month since the movie been out already. Wow. Um, that Roger Edgar is able to allow or is able to, or is able to show in this film some surreal, some fantasy. There's a mixture of all of it, and I actually like something about this character that this character is not a good person he's not you 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 see him first time as an adult go through this this assault and it's done in one take that he joins in on a group with a group of warriors to brutalize and invade and murder innocent people women and children and you see that so this guy is not innocent but you do feel for him that he is at a place where he lost his innocence as a child so when you when he's reintroduced to his goal and you see that it's kind of somewhat of an addiction and somewhat of something that he needs to fulfill and he can't deviate from this past you do feel for him. You do feel for him. Like there is a moment where he makes a decision where he does fall in love with Anya Taylor Joy. He does have kids, a little of a spoiler. He is in a position of either can he forfeit his vengeance, his quest for vengeance, or live a life of peace. And you see, he, it's it's a struggle. It's like he can't make that decision to go the other way. He has to follow the path of vengeance. The movie's beautifully shot. The movie's beautifully shot, and the runtime's actually pretty cool. It's like 137 minutes, so like 2 hours, 17 minutes, and it actually went by pretty, pretty quick. It does remind me of The Revenant, though. I might like the revenant a little bit better. Actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. This is actually pretty good because it's similar. The both the revenant and this film, the Northmen, are quite similar. Not in tone, but just style, story, and just somewhat of the journey a little bit. But what 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 was really different about the Northmen is that. When the main antagonist, Alex Skarsgård's character, finally makes it to his destination, he's actually there for a while. He invades, um, or I would say he invades, he infiltrates 
the main bad guy, his uncle's kingdom. It's like a little small little village. He pretends to be a slave for him and tries to figure out ways and strategies to learn about his kingdom and was the best opportunity to seek his vengeance. And he's actually there for quite a while. And once the moment where he takes the opportunity to try to seek vengeance, it's actually this Shakespearean kind of like tragedy where the more he pursues his vengeance, the more he starts to sacrifice people i guess the intent of of unintentional sacrifices like it gets dark like there's a part where he ends up um murdering a few people of not of his intent and it becomes very dark where it starts to feel like he's kind of like the antagonist towards the end but you're just and and you're just witnessing that you're like there to just witness this man um descend into pure madness and just um a dark path and it's actually kind of heartbreaking and just it's actually heartbreaking but it's intense when when the action scenes builds up and then the duel the final duel wow it's amazing yeah man i don't know man i'm kind of disappointed this, that this film is bombing at the box office you can rent it now on youtube you could buy and purchase it on youtube which I might do that. Because <laughs> this movie was freaking awesome. Like, man, you have to check this movie out. The Northman, Roger Eggers, underrated masterpiece. Comment below. Let me know if you have seen it, what you thought about it. And let me know what is your favorite underrated movie.